Yellowstone Park has been a huge spot for attraction, but there have been many controversies surrounding it, and this is because there is a massive supervolcano lurking beneath the park. Will the supervolcano erupt soon? How bad will the damage be? Will the world survive it? Will it wipe out the entire human race? In today's video, I'm going to answer these questions about the Yellowstone Volcano. Yellowstone National Park has been since 1872 and is the world's oldest national park and spans 8,987 square kilometers. It is located in one of the top hotspots on Earth. This hotspot delivers molten rock and heat from deep within the Earth to just below the Earth's surface. The intense heat generated from the hot magma underground in the park is responsible for all the hot springs, geysers, steaming mud pools, and steam vents. Yearly, millions of people come to enjoy the breathtaking sight of Yellowstone's natural landscape and steaming appeals, including the Old Faithful Geyser, the abundance of hiking trails, steam vents, hot springs, and wildlife housed in the park. Will Yellowstone erupt? Yes, at some point it will. How soon it will be is not ascertained yet. Beneath Yellowstone National Park is a five mile deep reservoir of hot magma. This reservoir is fed by a giant surging mass of molten rock erupting from over a hundred miles below. And as the magma enters the chambers and cools, the temperature of the Earth's surface overhead periodically rises and falls. Throughout history, the eruption of the magma chambers has happened on very rare occasions, and the last recorded eruption is the Pitchstone Plateau eruption that happened maybe 70,000 years ago. A volcanic super eruption on the volcano explosivity index has an eruption magnitude of 8 or greater and will erupt more than 240 cubic miles of material. Three of these massive volcanic super eruptions have been recorded in the history of Yellowstone from 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 664,000 years ago. Super eruptions of this magnitude erupt a massive amount of magma that forms a large round depression known as a caldera above the region the magma was erupted from. In the history of Yellowstone, the largest super eruption happened 2.1 million years ago, and it erupted 2,450 cubic kilometers of material. Most of Yellowstone's eruptions were smaller than Volcanic Explosive Index 8 super eruptions, so classifying it as a supervolcano might be quite far-fetched. The Yellowstone caldera was formed at the Yellowstone Lava Creek after one of the last super eruptions and is 631,000 years old. The eruption ejected so much material that it left behind a 34 by 50 mile depression in the ground. A caldera's trail stretches from northern Nevada and eastern Oregon to Yellowstone National Park. The oldest caldera erupted 16 million years ago and the caldera is getting younger to the northeast since the North American tectonic plates above the hotspot has been gradually migrating southwest. The lightness of a disastrous super eruption draws a lot of attention to Yellowstone, and this super eruption can be over thousands of times bigger and deadlier than any eruption that we're used to. Geologists have found proof of at least 47 super eruptions in Earth's history. The most recent eruption occurred around 26,000 years ago in Lake Taupo, New Zealand. The most dramatic eruption was the massive eruption of Tobo 74,000 years ago, caused by shifting tectonic plates. This caused a dramatic 6-10 to 10 year global winter, and it nearly wiped out the just emerging humanity. Every 100,000 years, the Earth sees approximately one super eruption. Why are there so many earthquakes in Yellowstone? Almost all earthquakes that have happened at Yellowstone are caused by the sudden breakage or fracture of rocks due to stress on the crust. When water boils in a geyser in the geothermal areas of Yellowstone, tremors are one of the varieties of earthquakes that can be observed. For several years, 
Yellowstone has been closely watched and tracked. There has been no observation of long period occurrences that are generally associated with magma movements that sometimes precede an eruption. Observing long period occurrences does not necessarily mean that Yellowstone is preparing to erupt. Long period earthquakes usually occur in other volcanoes around the globe, including volcanoes in California that have not erupted in thousands of years. In the history of the world, in 1959, at Hebgen Lake northwest of Yellowstone, the largest earthquake had a magnitude of 7.3 volcanic explosive index that uprooted a 25 mile long and 40 feet tall fissure. It was caused by the expansion of the Earth's crust. The earthquake uprooted a 40 kilometer long crack that rose up to 40 feet vertically. Earthquakes can also change the behavior of hydrothermal vents in Yellowstone. The interval between the super eruptions of Old Faithful Giza increased significantly after the 1959 earthquake. Should the Yellowstone volcano erupt today, what do you think it would be like? The chances of any super eruption happening in Yellowstone are extremely low, but if it happens, no matter how big or small, what will it look like? Most eruptions that have happened in the past were not super explosive. A hydrothermal explosion or a lava flow is the most likely explosive event that will occur in Yellowstone. Hydrothermal explosions are usually very minimal and they occur when superheated water trapped underneath the Earth's surface rapidly converts from water to vapor. This vapor violently disrupts the rock confining it, causing a rapid eruption of boiling water, steam, mud, and fragments or rock across an area with a diameter of a few meters to several kilometers. This explosion appears every few years in Yellowstone National Park and forms a crater several meters in diameter. It forms a crater with a diameter as large as several hundred meters across every few thousand years. Of the last 50 or so explosions, almost all were simple lava flows. If a lava flow occurs any time from now, it would have a minimal direct impact outside of Yellowstone National Park. Another likely eruption may be a volcanic eruption. This would likely be accelerated by a swarm of earthquakes in a specific region of the park as the magma hits the Earth's surface. What if we get a super eruption that is 1,000 times more powerful than any normal eruption, blasting at least 240 cubic miles of material? Worst case scenario, if the supervolcano underneath Yellowstone National Park ever erupts, the warning signals would be much larger. Intense seismic activity will first be seen throughout the park. Before this eruption can occur, the earthquakes will have to crush up the rocks above the magma, and this activity could take weeks, months, or years. The pool of magma underneath Yellowstone is large enough to fill the 1,000 cubic mile Grand Canyon 11.2 times, and it takes weeks or months to empty. The lava flows from the eruption will be confined within maybe 40 miles within the park. Only about one third of the material would end up in the atmosphere. The explosion will be so powerful that it will spew massive amounts of ash thousands of miles into the stratosphere across the United States and create an umbrella cloud that will expand in different directions. The main damage that can occur is from this volcanic ash. It is a combination of splintered rock and glass and it can cause a huge disaster and the effects will be felt worldwide. The greatest danger is not the volcanic super eruption but the after effects of the eruption. Those who live in Yellowstone or nearby will likely be unaware of the volcano about to erupt, except for the huge explosion that will happen at the start. Those who live far away from Yellowstone will not have to deal with the explosion, but its effects. A super eruption could potentially bury the northern Rocky Mountains under a meter of ash and devastate large parts of Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah. The Midwest would receive a few inches of ash and the coast may get even smaller inches of ash. The exact distribution depends on the season and weather conditions at the time of the eruption. This massive amount of volcanic ash is capable of causing disastrous effects 
like killing people, damaging buildings, destroying farmlands, suffocating crops and plants, closing down power plants, blocking roads and highways, causing respiratory issues, clogging sewer lines, and even restricting air transportation across North America. A volcanic super eruption will have massive effects on the global weather and climate. There will be effects like falling ash and changes that may last from years to decades. These particles have a short lifespan in the atmosphere, so the effects are temporary, but can still be dramatic. Falling ash is not like the soft ash of burning wood. Falling ash is very sharp and looks like fragments of glass under the microscope. When you inhale it, the ash splits up your lungs and also forms cement in your body. It will kill both humans and animals that try to inhale it. Huge amounts of volcanic gas like sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide get deposited into the atmosphere. The most consequential effects come from the conversion of sulfur dioxide to sulfuric acid, which condenses rapidly in the stratosphere to form fine sulfate aerosols and reflect the sun's radiation into the atmosphere. This reflection cools the troposphere and causes global cooling. It will cause the temperature and energy of the Earth to dip below the normal levels. Volcanic carbon dioxide can also heighten global warming. Mount Tambora in Sumbawa Island, Indonesia, is recorded to have the world's largest volcanic eruption, which cooled the Earth enough to damage crops around the globe. Falling ash, lack of sunlight, colder temperatures, foraging, trying to survive will become the new norm after the volcanic super eruption. Lack of sunlight will reduce the number of photosynthesis plants needed to produce energy. Herbivorous animals will starve to death and the loss of animals will become one more reason food resources will dwindle. After all of these have been said, will humanity survive this super eruption? Yes, humanity will survive it. An eruption at Yellowstone is not enough to wipe out the entire human race, but the after effects of it will be severely unpleasant. Millions of years back, the volcano erupted a couple of times, and it did not put an end to the human race. The Earth is still very full of life, although the population of humans has become relatively larger compared to the times of the eruptions. Lives will be lost. Yes, people will die, but not even up to 50% of the Earth's population. The odds of a super eruption happening are very low because there are no signs of an eruption on the horizon. Of course, Yellowstone will constantly get rocked with earthquakes, and the magma will continue to rise and fall, but nothing is out of the ordinary. According to the United States Geological Survey, the behavior of the Yellowstone volcano has remained constant for the past 140 years. And looking at the three previous eruptions, the percentage of a volcanic super eruption in Yellowstone is 0.00014%. After some time, volcanoes die out. The heat emanating from below and cold from the surface affect the magma chambers. If the temperature of heat coming from below drops, the magma chambers could freeze over and turn into a granite mass. As Lowenstern said, the Earth will have volcanic super eruptions in the future, but the odds that it will come from Yellowstone are very low. So until then, enjoy the exquisite view and hydrothermal features of the Yellowstone National Park. That brings us to the end of what will happen if Yellowstone blows up one day. Let us know in the comments section if you like this video and want to see more of it. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified when we post a new video.